guys welcome back to the black jersey it's your boy max and i'm the host of the channel and uh, once again a big thank you to my patrons for your continued support today i've got a very special guest uh from the mighty chiefs i'd like him to introduce himself uh yeah g'day guys my name is alex nankable um play for the chiefs and uh tasman marco and uh right now very uh special events going on right now um alex is in the maori all blacks camp and uh, next week, he'll be taking on Ireland. So that's going to be pretty good stuff right there, guys. We'll do um, a bit of a Q&A. We'll get to know about Alex, how his career's progressed. And uh, we'll go from there. So, mate, um, you were born in um, Auckland, moved to Gisborne a few days later. But then you grew up through the uh, Christchurch system, having attended Christchurch boys. But then all of a sudden, in 2015, you debuted for Tasman as an 18-year-old. So what inspired you to uh, go north and join the Mighty Marco? Um, I think there's probably a few things. Probably like, um, probably I've always looked for opportunity where I could actually play and get on the field, um, first and foremost. So they offered me a full contract out of school um, to be in the full squad for Tasman. Um, and it was pretty much, that was pretty much the biggest thing. And then also having watched them a um, few years prior, like I think 2013, they got promoted from the championship to the premiership in NPC. Um, and I just loved the, the style of footy they played. And um, I knew that I'd be in good hands with Leon McDonald and um, Kieran Kane. So that was probably the main things. Definitely would have um, helped out having a coach like that, considering uh, how he's been going with the Blues. Um, I'll ask you as well, Alex, how did the Chiefs, um, sorry, not the Chiefs culture, um, how did the team's culture um, assist with the progress of your career, mate? Yeah, well, obviously it was my first kind of taste of like a professional culture, but um, I went up for a visit when I was still at school um, in the end of 2014. And like you just walk in there and you, you don't feel like any pressure or um, you can just kind of be yourself. And that's kind of what you learn pretty quickly at Tasman. Um, like you don't have to change for the team or for the culture or you can just come in um, and be yourself. And K KK used to call it like the fruit salad. There's boys from all over the show, like there's the Tongan boys, the Samoan boys, um, a couple of Fijians, and then the boys that grew up in New Zealand. So um, yeah, you can just be yourself. And um, it definitely helped me just be comfortable and um, be confident playing my rugby and um, just being able to express myself. I love a bit of that. And um, I think I can probably see that now that you mentioned it with how you play on the field. Um, after impressing in the 2016 season, so you signed for the Mighty Chiefs, mate. Um, having been a Mako man up until then, um, is it the kind of the same answer you have when it came to deciding to play Super Rugby up north in a different island? Um, island? Yeah, it is. It is a little bit actually. Um, so I had kind of three offers. There was a Chiefs, which was like a replacement player. I mean, it was for Charlie Nata, who had been struggling with his concussions for a long time. Um, so that was kind of like the best opportunity for me in New Zealand. Um, to actually get an opportunity to uh, get on the field for the Chiefs. I had one from the Crusaders, which is like a, it's kind of like an interim training contract. Like you just do pre-season. Um, so there's no guarantee um, that you could play potentially or be in the squad um, unless kind of, you're kind of just banking on injuries after that. And then um, I actually had one from the Western Force. <laughs> like a full, yeah. full, full contract. Um, for the force and I was like, I was going to go, but they, the Australian rugby union didn't let me um, play for Tasman. So I'd have to get released from Tasman. I have to play over there. So oh, I was pretty, uh, I'm actually in hindsight, pretty glad that it fell through um, all things considering, but it was only going to be like a short term thing, play a bit of professional rugby and then come back um, to New Zealand. But yeah, so that's why I pretty much chose the Chiefs. That was the best opportunity for me in New Zealand to, um, play Super Rugby pretty much and same thing like watching them play they uh, were under Rennie um, they always 
kept the ball alive, attacked from everywhere, just played an awesome style of football. Um, so, yeah, that's probably one of the main reasons. Um, so, though most, including me, remember your debut against Stormers for uh, SP Maria's wonder try from the offload, um, how did it feel for you from your end to debut while playing in an arena in South Africa, Alex? It's pretty crazy, um, and it all happened pretty fast, to be honest. Like, I think Johnny Fowley got red carded against, I think it was the Hurricanes or the, the Bulls, the game before we went over, and um, because of that, he got suspended, so he couldn't go. So I got called in. And then Finlay Christie, my roommate, got, um, he got, like, the the, the runs, like, was spewing and all sorts of coming, stuff coming out of his body. Um, and he was meant to, I wasn't meant to play. But then we carried three like midfielders outsides and sides rather than having a nine. So I went in there for Finlay, um, which is so that whole part of it was pretty crazy in the first place. Just, just absolute run, like with luck, good luck. And then Beaver got a bit of a head knock. Um, so I, I came for 10 minutes. I only played 10 minutes, but it was unreal. Like tackled Sia Khaleesi, cleaned a few rucks. Um, and I can't remember, is it Newlands? The stadium? Oh, I, think, I think so. I'm not 100% yeah. sure, man. Um, I think that was the one. South African fan can fact check us. Yeah, it's it insane, bro. Like that stadium it was one of the greats. Like, um, just packed out. Um, the crowd's pretty savage, but they just love rugby. It's I kind of would compare it to Fijian fans a little bit. Like, they just love rugby. Um, so they weren't too savage, but they just. Like, we were bust in and there was already people, like, we were driving through a big group of people. Um, so, yeah, it was a pretty awesome experience, even though I didn't play much. No, nah, it's all good, bro, sweet as. Um, so, but back to the NPC, though. So, after back-to-back final defeats, what was the key to Tasman's first ever title in 2019, followed by another one in 2020? Of course, you took part in both of them. Um, how did that all fall into place, mate? Yeah, I think it's um, a combination of like, so a lot of us had been there 2015, 2016. So that was like coming into kind of like our prime. Like we were all pretty young when we got there, like Quentin Strange, Mitch Hunt, um, Finlay Christie, like all kind of early 20s, 2021 20, when we got to Tassie. So um, by, I think, 2019, I was maybe 22 Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but like we've been in that system and been together, playing together um, for quite a quite a few years. Then, so like we were starting to like really gel. Um, we had like the system and um, our structures that um, Leon had implemented, and then Andrew Goodman had taken over, like like to a T, like just the detail within our game. So um, was, that was probably the main thing. Um, and then, like, you kind of come <clears throat> as you can't, like get older, you start to get more confident in your game and develop better habits in the game. So, um, those things definitely helped. And then we got like the likes of Jordi Tofua, um, he came back, um, Liam Squire was available, um, and like the squad that we had managed to get together, um, at, like boys missing out the All Blacks, like Dave Harvilli, um, Will Jordan was there. It's just like kind of everything worked out, and um, it was probably it was probably due, bro. To be fair, like we've been playing some pretty good rugby the last few years. We always got there, but we just fell short at the final hurdle. So um, it kind of everything just coming together really well. Like we didn't have too many injuries, and um, yeah, and then that just led to 2020 when really everything was against us going up to Auckland um, to play that final. Uh, we lost Mitch Hunt and. The first 15 minutes he got knocked out. Um, so Timmy O'Malley came in and just ran an absolute cutter. And I think just like our organisation and how prepared we were, and we knew how to play in finals. So we knew what it took. Um, and that pretty much won us the game, I reckon, that year. I can um, probably agree with you that um, the title was well overdue after, you know, all the finals and stuff, mate. So, um yeah, I was um, quite excited when the, um, when the Tasman team won it, rather, at the time. Um, we're going to go back to Super Rugby once again, though, everyone. So um, all of you guys watching, you may remember back to 2020 and 2021. Alex had um, come out of uh, winning a few titles, but from 2020 to 2021, the Chiefs um, had a bit of a bad losing streak, and there were probably a few obstacles to overcome whilst attempting to end the losing streak. 
So Alex, what's some advice you could give to some younger athletes on like a difficult season, mate? Yeah, it's, it is a tough one because like you obviously play the game to to compete and ultimately win games and try and win championships and whatnot. Um, but I guess like like it's going to happen like at some stage in your career, unless you're playing for the Crusaders, you're probably going to, you might lose a few games um, back to back here and there. So I think like for us, we always stayed really tight as a group. Like even though we weren't getting the results on the field, um, I think just staying really tight as a group and um, just continuing to like take things day by day or like task by task or training by training rather than worrying about outcomes. If you get too caught up in the outcome, of anything, if it's the next game or the championship, um, then that's when you start to get emotional about uh, results rather than if you focus kind of just enjoying yourself, enjoying the, your um, time playing with your friends, um, having fun, um, and then hopefully that can add to the outcome and that being a positive result. But, um, yeah, I guess just that take it day by day. Don't get too far ahead of yourselves and just um, it's an awesome game we play. It's super fun. So. Just enjoy the time that you have with your mates and yeah. I love it, mate. Um, probably couldn't have said that one better. Um, speaking of uh, enjoying yourself and enjoying the game, um, a lot of people do that because they try to mould their games around like their influences and stuff. Um, was there any player who influenced your career like the most? And like, who were you trying to, I guess, mould your game around when things initially kicked off for you, mate? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I used to, I only moved into the midfield probably year 13 just because I had this massive growth spurt. Um, so before that, it was Dan Carter because I played 10, 15. So like, okay. um, like at school, like I would religiously kick into like a crazy catch with my left foot at the tennis ball. Like I'll just stand there and like pin kick, which is just like a small motion um, just to get the coordination of it just because I wanted to be able to be ambidextrous and kick off both feet. Um, and like just had to have a really good skill set pretty much. Um, but then when I moved into the midfield, like there's so many differences from like running the game at 10 or um, covering backfield space at 15 that you have to be able to do a lot better than um, what's required in those positions. So like ball carrying, like the collision, pretty much just everything to do with the collision, the breakdown. Um, so I guess a change from Dan Carter to Martin Nonu. Um, and just watching him kind of when I was from when I was a youngster from him playing on the wing um, then moving into the midfield and seeing like how much he changed the player from being like pretty one-dimensional ball carrier um, to a guy that had late feet who could um, offload he could um, square a defender up put this outside guy into space um, he could beat people with his acceleration he could kick attacking kick um, and then also on defense he was just this physical presence, um, which is pretty tough on D, like not many people are that dominant in the collision. So, yeah, I guess it was him. Um, but I was never going to be get there physically, just probably a little bit to do with my genetics and his genetics. He's, he's got one up on me there, but um, yeah, just to be, to be that, like, yeah, yeah, to be that triple threat as a midfielder. Um, I still, I'm not there yet, and well, there's probably still a lot of things in my game that I'm, I can work on and then actually get confident doing it in the game. Like, I'm probably not very confident kicking in the game. So, um, yeah, just to be that triple threat like him. I don't know, mate, because um, since um, the two Māori All Blacks games you played last year against Samoa, you've got four in total. You've been in career-best form, and I think you're getting pretty close there. Um, did selection for the Māori All Blacks last year, was that kind of the reason you... Um, I guess, catalyzed this career best form? Uh, I definitely had, I think it had something to do with like my confidence, um, knowing that playing at international level, um, that I could, I could pull that out of the bag. Like knowing that, like I had the ability to um, do that in a, in a big game like that, I think just gave me confidence moving forward. Um, into the minor 10 season when I come back from injury and then coming into this year, knowing that like I can compete at the highest level, I guess. Um, but for me, it was like, I feel as though I've always probably had 
like the understanding of the game and the ability and um, and being physically been there, but it was like the mental side of the game that I didn't really probably I took for granted a little bit. And then you kind of saw in twenty twenty you saw glimpses of like my performances, but it was probably a bit more. Oh, sorry, twenty twenty one. I was a bit more inconsistent than what I was this year. Um, but I think we, me and David Hill and Aaron Walsh at the Chiefs focused on that side of the game a lot. Um, yeah. Being able to control your emotion and not worry about making mistakes and being in the moment, heaps of stuff. I mean, I think that kind of built through the season um, and really helped in that game too. Like, Just so you can go out and just back your ability, back your preparation and not be worrying about other stuff. And you kind of saw that in that last summer game. Um, yeah, it's probably the best game of rugby I've ever played in my life too. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna debate you there, mate. Like, um, I think you probably softened the blow of um ALB being lost for um our boys for the Chiefs season. Um, selection for the Maori All Blacks. We'll head back to that once again. Um, it can often lead to players, as far as I'm aware, learning a lot about their culture. Are there like any particular rituals, um, that the team kind of has to immerse the players ahead of matches, mate? Yeah, so um, pretty much when we're in there, like, we're fully immersed in, like, Māori culture. So for a lot of us who um, have whakapapa, Māori whakapapa, um, but haven't kind of grown up living it, um, it's quite it's quite cool. It's quite new. You learn a lot. Um, so we do lots of, like, what it's called wānanga, and it's pretty much just, like, a meeting based around, like, the Maori culture. So we sing, sing uh, waiata. Um, the Komata would, um, tells us stories about um, different stuff that um, to do with um, the Maori Maori culture. So you're pretty much just learning, um, and you're pretty immersed in it, which is pretty cool. So like you do that, uh, we'll probably do it every day. Um, have a little 45 minute block where um, we're doing that, learning songs, haka, um, learn, uh, listening to stories. And then um, lots of like uh, karakia, so that's like a prayer. So we do that um, when we're finished. Um, wānanga. Oh, sorry, when we start. I've got bad memory these days. Um, but it's like it's like different prayer for different things. So like when you get close to the game day, we have one before we run out, like the Komata would does one um, while we're in a huddle, like just before we're about to run out. Um, onto the field, like after our, after our warm-up and stuff. So um, you're just immersed in tikanga and you, um, it's all done properly. Oh, sorry. The, the tikanga is done properly. So like the, uh, how do you explain it? So bro, I'm pretty fresh with stuff. Nah, it's, just <laughs> but, uh, like it, mate. it's just like doing things correctly, pretty much, tikanga. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. I can um, I can imagine old uh, TJ Piranara and Brad Webber getting into that, eh, mate? <laughs> Yeah, 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 they love it. Eh? TJ's, <laughs> I didn't realise TJ's, um, he can speak to the all, but I didn't even realise. And Brad loves it. Like, he, he's even when he's been at the Chiefs, like, he's driven and stuff like that. Um, so it's pretty cool having those two guys on the team. Yeah, um, those two um, being the two skippers uh, must be pretty cool. Um, back to the Chiefs. We'll read through Alex's um, 2022 season stats for everyone watching. Um, for everyone watching, my source is Ultimate Rugby as normal. I think you guys are getting used to me using him as a source. So, Alex, mate, you played 15 games this season, scored seven tries, though your career tally had previously just been five ahead of the season. Uh, you ran 931 metres, beat 37 defenders, 12 clean breaks, off uh, 102 carries. So it's pretty uh, decent metres per carry, right? Uh, we got uh, seven offloads as well, three try assists, and um, an 85% tackle percentage ratio. So, mate, if I told you they would be your end-of-season stats, uh, how do you reckon you would have reacted to me saying that? Yeah, um, I'd be pretty surprised to be fair. Like, even hearing them now, I don't even know quite a few of them. <laughs> um, like, the defenders beaten and the clean breaks, like, I didn't realise they were that high. Um, but I guess, like, I was just lucky, like, I could played 15 games, like you said. So I missed one, um, one game for the Chiefs this year. Um, and like, all you can ask as a rugby player at this level is just continuity. So like, consistent game time, playing big minutes, and yeah, I kind of think that just speaks for itself. I reckon um, that probably does help and stuff. Like, um, 
because you've been in the same team as ALB for so long and just getting that run was um, pretty good for you. Um, we'll give the audience a bit of a laugh, <laughs> um, continuing on stats. So, mate, um, we'll see if the audience um, has a bit of a giggle at this one. Uh, which Chiefs backline player um, has the highest bench press uh, PB? Um, I think it's Jonah Lowe or Chase Tertier. Oh, one of those two. Goodness me. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if anyone, so, or oh, even Cortez. So there's a few of us, I think me, Chase, Jonah, and Cortez are all about 160 kgs on the bench. There's no one like, I don't think there's anyone that got over that. Maybe one of the boys got 165, like Jonah, Jonah Lowe. Um, you gotta love, um, you got to love some of the smaller players on the pitch lifting so much, eh? <laughs> bro, Cortez, like, coming pre- uh, this year. And we were just, like, blown away by how strong he is, though. Just <laughs> yeah, 160. It's crazy, yeah, for a small fellow like um, when, I got, um, when I got the guy's signature, he wasn't exactly the biggest guy. Like, um, it's pretty crazy to hear that. Yeah. Um, we all love seeing the big boys in open space as well. Uh, who do you reckon the quickest front rower is in your team, mate, in the Chiefs? Yeah, I'd say it's Sonny, Simisoni. Yeah. Uh, he's pretty explosive, like... From like a, I'm not sure about in the game, but like a, when we do a 10 meter, he'll be pretty good. Um, Angus Tarvel, uh, he's like a pretty, dy- he's probably one of the more dynamic uh, front rowers going around. Um, so I think those two are pretty, like the high one sixes. So that's, if you're kind of midfielder running low one sixes to mid one sixes, you're normally pretty happy. So like if they're getting one six, like high one sixes for a front row, like that's pretty, like pretty exceptional. It's insane, eh? Yeah. Um, any other uh, interesting gym stats that uh, might give the audience um, a bit of a laugh, mate? Um, I, just, I didn't think about this one, bro. You know, we don't like, there's nothing like real out of the norm that we do. Um, I think probably one that will probably blow people away is Quinn, Quinn Tapia. Oh, he's just a freak. Like, you can obviously see the way he plays. Like, yeah. he's just dominant. Um, breaks tackles pretty willy nilly. Um, I think he squatted 245 kgs this year, which is like front row numbers, but even some of the front rowers can't do that. It's ridiculous, um, mate. So like, yeah, <laughs> it's freakish. Eh? Um, and then, like, things like Etienne, um, Sean Stevenson can jump over 50 centimeters just from a hands on hips, just standing there, like, jump over the air. So that's. Like, there's some freak athletes. Um, yeah, I wish I wish I had their genetics at times. <laughs> at least you, um, at least you were uh, matching them for um, work ethic and stuff, mate. Righto, guys, we got uh, some pretty uh, important stuff coming up. So, as I mentioned earlier in the video, guys, the second match between the Maori All Blacks and Ireland is just a week away from the day I'm putting this on YouTube. So, Alex, mate, um, are we going to see you uh, playing this time? Yeah, so um, I was actually meant to play the first one, um, but I got sick, unfortunately. So, I guess, like, we didn't have a break during Super. So, I was running down towards the end of the season and probably just all come together at the end there and hit me like a ton of bricks. So, I feel a lot better now. And I've been told that, oh, well, I don't know if I can tell you, if <laughs> worst comes to worst, I cut this out, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you'll see me playing. You see me playing. I can't tell you if I'm on the bench or starting, but um, I'll be involved. No, so yeah, some, no. by the side of the side, so hopefully, it works out. <laughs> All good. Uh, we've also got uh, an All Blacks 15 tour confirmed from the end of year internationals, everybody. So. I haven't actually seen some Māori All Blacks fixtures confirmed for the end of year, which really disappoints me as I think Māori culture is the best of all time in history. <laughs> um, how exciting, Alex, would it be to be called into either the All Blacks or All Blacks 15 and uh, head up north for um, either team, mate? Yeah, it'd be honestly unreal, man. Um, obviously, dream come true if I somehow I got picked in the All Blacks um, after my 10. But if, if I was able to um, get picked for that All Blacks 15, um, I guess it's just more exposure to international rugby. And um, for a guy in my position, like that's all you can, or you really want at this kind of, at the level I am. So to go over there and then um, just get exposure to international rugby. I don't know how strong the teams they're playing 
will be like they play in Canada and um, maybe like an Irish or Scottish A team um, and then the Barbarians. So um, yeah, just this, just their exposure to international rugby and just to keep testing yourself at the highest level um, would be an awesome opportunity for me. So yeah, hopefully I can uh, get some good form going through my team cup and potentially push for push for that team. Will be a well deserved selection, but obviously with uh, the Tasman season just a few weeks or a month or so away, um, purists like myself are getting pretty excited. Uh, do you reckon Tasman to finish this uh, Q and A off can finish a th- can finish sorry um, a third NPC title this season? Oh yeah, hundred percent, bro. I'd, like we've pretty got a pretty unchanged team. Um, from last year, we obviously lost a few players, like Tim O'Malley's gone overseas, and then um, the All Blacks boys all got picked again. So, but we've still got like Quinn Strange and Mitch Hunt. Like for us, they're unreal leaders um, and unreal players, and they're both in their own rights. And um, they pretty much run the cutter anyway, bro. So, like, I think it'll probably be hard losing Goody, but we've got Gray um, and Piggy. Um, Dan Perry and Greg Cornelius so um, stepping in as co-coaches so that might be a little bit different dynamic but having Mitch and Quinn there I think will kind of ease that transition as they come in so um, I reckon we, t- we could definitely do it bro we've got the detail um, we, we prepare like you know tomorrow um, and we've always got a plan for um, whatever happens so um, hoping that it comes together for us bro to be honest that'd be pretty awesome yeah, mate. The thing that um, has me worried um, the most, though, is uh, I looked up the fixtures for Hawks Bay since that's where I live, everybody. And uh, Tasman are coming to town to McLean Park to probably try and steal the Ranfurly Shield, so I'm getting pretty worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. It's, uh, hopefully they can... I'm sure they will. Um, like, they've got a pretty awesome team this year as well, so if they can hold it there, then we can hopefully have another crack at it. Um, we obviously... We played them... Played them last year up, up in Hawke's Bay um, for it the first time. And, yeah, we were pretty shocking that day, to be honest. We probably got a bit of stage fright um, being the first time we'd played for it in, like, 10 years or something. So, um, yeah, yeah, hopefully they do, bro. Because, yeah, we, we beat them up there in the semi. Um, so we know how to beat them up there. So, yeah. Yeah, you got me nervous, mate. Um, all good. I think uh, that finishes off our Q&A. So thank you, Alex, uh, for coming on to the Black Jersey to, uh, I guess, uh, chat about your career so far, um, things to come, and uh, obviously entertain the audience. Um, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Uh, much appreciated. Obviously, you can go uh, check me out on Instagram as well if you're um, keen to see a bit more content. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't ever miss a new video. And once again, thank you very much, Alex. Cheers, mate. No worries at all, bro. My pleasure.